Welcome to Lingen in northern Norway, home to one of probably the northernmost and definitely some of the best berries in the world. In today's program, I'll use berries in many forms. I'll start off with a rare berry that will only grow here in the high north, the cloudberry and I'll use it to make a delicious yogurt refreshment. Berries can also be used in savory dishes and for main course, I'll make filet of venison with cloudberries, lingonberries and a raspberry salad. For dessert, I'll make the festive Norwegian cream cake that is just saturated with berries and with the sweetness of the Arctic summer. The cloudberry is a berry that only grows in northern Scandinavia and a relative of the cloudberry that is often called the bake apple berry grows in northern Canada and in Alaska. Well, for those Norwegians that do pick cloudberries, it's not a hobby, it's more like an obsession and people have their own places where they pick cloudberries and they guard these places jealously. It's said that there are small, small patches that only a few people know about and they can come down with, with buckets full of cloudberries. And uh, Scandinavians are generally quite social people and, and they like to share, but uh, they will never share their private cloudberry place. And it is said that childless people have died without divulging it to their nephews or nieces because it, it should only go in the direct bloodline. One of the special things about the cloudberry, and the thing that surprises most people when they taste a fresh, unsweetened cloudberry the first time, is that it contains so much flavor. It has so many layers and dimensions of flavor, but it has hardly any sweetness to it. I, I think that this is one of the qualities because you can both use cloudberries in sweet dishes, as I'm going to do now, or in savory dishes, as I'm going to do later on in this program. But now I'm going to start off with a sweet dish, a refreshing uh, yogurt drink with cloudberries. Here I have some plain yogurt that I'm adding to a blender. I'd say a couple of deciliters, about a cup, and then some yogurt ice cream, mostly because it's cold and that's nice in a refreshing drink about as much ice cream, yogurt ice cream, as I have yogurt. And then the cloudberries. I'm going to use some of them that I am going to blend and some of them that I will add towards the end. So a few tablespoons. Um, if you can't find fresh cloudberries, which is probably quite difficult outside of Scandinavia, you can uh, quite easily fi find cloudberry preserves that you can buy by mail order. And they will contain uh, quite a lot of uh, sugar, so you should probably use a little bit less uh, yogurt ice cream and then just try to uh, put your normal yogurt in the freezer uh, for at least 15 minutes. What I'm going to do now is add some sweetness to it because this has hardly any sweetness. Uh, it's a relatively light yogurt ice cream that doesn't contain much sugar. And I do have my own sweets factory working over there. A couple of thousand workers are making honey for me. And honey is actually a much, much better way to sweeten a dish with cloudberries because honey also has these many layers of sweetness and, and uh, uh, it is highly aromatic, but it doesn't really compete with the aromas and the flavors of the cloudberries. 
But in order to get the honey out of my beehive here, I have to veil myself. Doesn't this make me look a whole lot better? My grandfather was a beekeeper and I remember as a child I was very impressed with him how he would allow his bees to walk over his hands and he would hardly ever get stung. He said that they know me and I know them. Well, I don't really know these bees that well, so I'm glad that I'm protected by these gloves. Especially now that I'm going to help myself to the sweet reward of their toil, the honey. Oops. <laughs> I do sense some fr frustration from the bees. Many people have been fascinated by the bees and the Belgian author and Nobel laureate Maurice Maeterlinck, he wrote in his book, The Life of the Bee in 1901, that the bee has found ways to eliminate hunger, loneliness and cold that we struggle with in our own lives. And he saw in the life of the bee a more perfect society. The bee works all summer, it gathers all kinds of good things. It is more than willing to sacrifice its life for its queen and its mother hive. And then when fall comes, it doesn't sit down to feast. No, it simply lays down to die. It's not the kind of life that I would like to live and not the kind of society that I admire, but it is impossible not to see a beauty and a poetry in that. Oh, let's hope the bees are not too angry with me for stealing this honey. Well, what I'm doing now is adding some honey to the yogurt and cloudberries. A good tablespoon, that was a, a very good and very generous tablespoon. And now comes the only technical element of the cooking process, turning on the blender. Now, what I need to do is add just a couple more cloudberries just to get that fresh taste and just a bit of the real fresh honey as well. This is just for decoration, so if you can't find it, then that's not so important. But look at this. Mm. Ah, it has this perfect mixture of, of the aromatic and sweet honey and the aromatic ephemeral and not so sweet cloudberries. And it is a perfect mixture. There are really just two flavors here, honey and cloudberries, and that's all it takes. is Arctic territory. The polar circle is 350 miles, nearly 600 kilometers to the south of me. This mountain range is called the Lynx Alps and it is among the few in Norway that has been untouched by the glaciers in the two last ice ages. There's something to be said about the weather and the climate in northern Norway. And that is, if you don't like the weather and the climate, just wait a few minutes. Well, the problem is that it just gets worse and worse. From somewhere around mid-August until summer approaches again in 
late June, early July, the weather is just incredibly harsh. But all summer, the relentless midnight sun has been shining. The combination of relatively moderate temperatures and the omnipresent sun makes the berries sweeter and more intensely flavored than their southern counterparts. They ripen more slowly and the strawberry harvest here in Lingen can be as late as mid-August. I'm going to demonstrate two very different ways of using berries. First, I'm going to make the traditional birthday cake, the cream cake that's served at birthdays and all other big occasions. It is really saturated with berries and it is a sweet delight. And then I'm going to demonstrate how to make a very, very different use of berries. I'm going to use them in a savory dish as well. Um, but first, a comment on the landscape. If you think this landscape looks ridiculous, that's because this is the point where the Lynx Alps dive into this bay, and this bay is called Laughter Bay. Well, hold your laughter, because it's time for some serious cake making. I start out with a sponge cake, and here I have lots of whipped cream, and the first thing I'll do is use that to make a blueberry cream. I like it when the cake has more flavor uh, near the bottom. So uh, I'm adding quite a lot of blueberries and a couple of tablespoons of sugar and for some additional flavor and some additional depth of flavor I add some vanilla. I here have a wonderful uh, highly aromatic vanilla bean and I'm cutting it in two lengthwise. I only need the seeds from about half a vanilla bean. I'm going to use the rest later. And I'm trying to crush some of the berries so we get a more intense mixture of flavors and much more color as well. Look at that fantastic color that you only get from the wild blueberries. Mm. It tastes fantastic and it's not too sweet um, but it has this kind of um, tartness from and sweetness from the berries and that little hint of vanilla not much but just enough so you notice that there is an extra dimension to this but as you can see I'm adding quite a generous amount of the blueberry cream so that it coats the entire sponge cake and also the side of, of the cake. So you'll ac actually be able to see this bluish color in the finished cake as well. And then I'm adding an extra layer. And this I'm going to fill only with plain cream. So we get a nice contrast, but not as much as with the blueberry cream. Now this is in a way the neutral one. Then one more layer and this is going to be a strawberry layer. So here I have some strawberries that I've just smashed into kind of some of it is just a puree and some of it is nice chunks so you get a little bit of structure in it and I'm mixing this with cream. Since there's so much strawberry in it, this cream has a tendency to be a bit runny. So if you have the opportunity, you could add a little bit of gelatin to it, especially if you're not serving the cake right away. Mm. It could need even more strawberry. And a 
hint more sugar. About one more tablespoon, I think. Because this layer isn't sweetened at all, so uh, it, it's really quite good if the next layer is, is a bit on the sweet side. It shouldn't be, you know, ultra sweet, but a bit on the sweet side. Now, need I mention that this may not be the perfect dish for those on a diet, but sometimes you ha really have to splash out and this is one of these cakes. And here comes the last layer. And to this, I'll add a little bit of the fresh unsweetened cream. A little bit of the bluish blueberry cream, the pinkish strawberry cream in between. There are no uh, general rules as to how a cream cake should look, but there seems to be at least agreement that you shouldn't be able to see the sponge cake. It should be completely covered in cream. And now it's time to decorate it completely with an abundance of berries. First the berries that we left out, some raspberries. I've always been very grateful to the raspberry because my parents keep telling me that I learned to walk because of a raspberry. I was a lazy child and I was one day placed in front of a row of raspberry bushes and and my parents left me there and the only way I could get to this big wonderful sweet succulent berries was by actually standing up and taking one step at a time and my father peeked up from around the corner and he actually saw that I moved down about 10 yards and when I returned back of course I fell down but at that point I couldn't pretend that I couldn't walk so from then on I was one of the pedestrians of the world. And then some blackberries, wonderful, plump and juicy and sweet blackberries. And a few black currants. Black currants are quite small but they're not very cooperative so they will easily take over the entire cake if the too many of them so just uh, one or maximum two berries per per slice of cake and then the last little touch is some more strawberries since I have this abundance of berries here I will also decorate the side of the cake with some strawberries so it will be very clear that this is a berry-based cake. Now, this is it. I need to get it into the refrigerator before it collapses. Now I'm going to demonstrate how uh, to use berries in a savory dish. I'm going to use raspberries, lingonberries and cloudberries to flavor three very nice and very small fillets of venison. These are about four ounces each, uh, about 125 grams. And they're perfect actually, since they are, are so highly flavored, you don't really need more. Of course, you could use two per person if you're really, really hungry. So what I want to do with them first is just uh, add some normal seasoning, some salt and pepper. And here in Scandinavia, we all, almost always use a bit of juniper berries to go with any kind of game. So here I have crushed a few juniper berries and they have quite intense flavor, one which is always associated with game. And I'm adding these small fillets to the sizzling hot butter in the pan. 
and I will allow them about five minutes and that should do it for, for these are quite quite thin. I will turn them around at least once. <laughs> Now they're done and I'm just transferring them back to the plate where there's an extra surplus of salt and pepper and juniper berries and I'm letting them rest while I make the salad. Uh, the salad is going to be very very simple, it's going to be a raspberry salad. I start off with some raspberry vinegar. A little bit of Dijon mustard less than a teaspoon, which really runs contrary to my instincts, which is always to use a lot of mustard. Some garlic, and I'm also normally very generous with the garlic, but here I just want a small hint of garlic. So less than half a clove of garlic, and some olive oil. This is really good olive oil, and you should use a good and fruity olive oil. And I'll start off by plating the salad. Here I have some lettuce, some lettuce hearts actually. So this is the bright green part. The darker green parts I've just thrown away. Now, this isn't a raspberry uh, salad just because there's a, a hint of raspberry vinegar in the dressing. It's mainly because I'm using uh, fresh, relatively tart raspberries in the salad as such. And it adds some tartness, it adds hints of sweetness in its aroma. And because of that tartness, it blends wonderfully with the, the savory element of the food, the meat. And then I'm adding the dressing. And I think the meat has rested long enough. And I'm cutting it into thin slices. Ah, it looks perfect. This is, this is kind of uh, medium rare, the way I like venison. Now, you could serve it like this, or you could serve it with some vegetables. I think instead of vegetables, I'm now going to use lingonberries and cloudberries. Lingonberries are a relative of the cranberry, so if you can't find lingonberries, you can use either lingonberry compote or uh, preserved lingonberries, if you can find that. But even if you can't find anything containing lingonberries, you can also use cranberries. But when it comes to cloudberries, I'm going to add some cloudberries here as well. If you can't find cloudberries or cloudberry preserves, I would say there is no substitute. But I think this dish does just fine without them. It just adds something special and something magical, the taste of the clouds. But you can do with that, I'm sure. And this is it. And here, I believe, are my guests. Hi.